Yo, you guys, this is Blacklist of the Abyss, and you're watching my review, finally, <laughs> for Kiwakuro no Brynhildr, Chapter 54. Alright, it's finally out. This and Trinity 7 and Batum are, like, the ones that rarely come out, therefore it's just, like, they're lower priority than the regular releases, so I've always figured, you know, if, if we, we wait this long for a chapter, it probably won't hurt to wait, like, a day or two or three or four <laughs> before the review to come out. It's so bad at me. Um, but yeah, if, if the only reason the review is late is because I was so behind with Tokyo and Ravens, Hunter x Hunter, the big three came out, you might have said it. it yeah, alright, so, but it's it's out now. Um, and this and I like the chapter overall. I mean, the beginning was just kind of, meh, you know, they're going over, they're talking about the plan again some more. Uh, Murakami left this message in like Invisible Ink or something, and he tried to like give them a clue about it by leaving two pens on a table or something like that. They didn't notice, all right? They, they didn't notice, but the plan, but everything worked out well in the end, so it, it doesn't really matter if they noticed or not. Um, Kazumi's kind of not letting herself get happy because she knows, like you know, we may have been able to avoid it this time, but next time when Mizuka uses her power. There's, there's no way we're going to be able to do this again. But she's informed that Misuka is in fact dead, so they have nothing to worry about, for now at least. So the other girls go off to take a bath, I believe, and Kazumi is just talking with Murakami. They're just alone talking to each other. And uh, they talk about a few things. One is about Kotori being the target. Uh, the other, Another thing is that um, Kazumi mentions that Misuka said that they have enough medicine to live another year. But they don't. So Murakami's trying to think about what it is that Misuka meant by that. You know, is it that they have enough materials to create a year's worth of medicine? Is it that they have enough clues to obtain a year's worth of medicine? Like he's he's trying to go through all these thoughts in his head and figure out what it is exactly that Misuka is talking about. Now, and he's just kind of getting frustrated a little bit, trying to figure out what it is he's not seeing and why he's not getting what it is she was talking about. But um, he happens to look over at Cosme, and she looks pretty cute there, so he starts to get conscious of her. And she can tell, so she just, she just kind of starts to screw around with him. So she tells, she just when Murakami's thinking, you know, well, what, she, she, you know, she confessed to me before, was she really being serious? She, she goes and says, you know, I wasn't actually being serious when I confessed to you before. That was all an act. So he's like, yeah. I, I, he he tries to he tries to like admit he tries to pretend like he wasn't caught thinking about it. He's like, that, that, you know, I, I already knew that. I wasn't worried about that. I already knew it was an act. But then you know, wow. Uh, but then she ends up kissing him on the cheek and leaving. So like. <laughs> <laughs> she's got to just screwing around with him a little bit there. Like he still has no clue what's going on. Um, he's still just pretty confused about the situation. So that was kind of funny. Um, but the main meat of the chapter is at the end there, with uh, that one guy with the bangs, like the hair that goes down here. Um, he actually, it, I actually was surprised by this. He actually seemed to have some remorse about. Uh, letting Musica die in vain without actually being able to complete her mission successfully. So it makes it seem like he actually does care. Like he tell he gives that uh, one girl some advice. Um, he tells her that, you know, this it's best that you lose your emotions. So I guess that's probably uh, some, his own experience talking. You know, he probably felt feels the same way she does, but she, he's trained himself to get rid of his emotions, except for in that particular point in time. But, uh, yeah, he probably just let himself show some emotions because he got fired. <laughs> so he knows he doesn't have to do it anymore. But, uh, yeah, he warns you that humans are this crazy species that are they're capable of a lot of bad things, and she should try to throw her emotions away or else she probably won't last. And she questions him, like, wait, what do you mean? Like, uh, you don't think they'll kill us or anything, right? He just... It's he pretty he's under the impression that they will, but he doesn't really let her. He doesn't really tell her that. Um, he ends up leaving, and he really was under the impression that they would kill him. So he's they're taking him out in this car, driving him away. And he's like, wow, you know, I thought they'd be much harder on me than this. 
And as soon as he thinks that, a guy comes around with a gun and shoots him in the head. He's like, <laughs> and he's like, oh, I, I should have known. <laughs> yeah, I, I figured it was going to be so, something like this. So, yeah, that's, wow. That's that's the chapter. Um, and overall, I guess I'd give it a 7 out of 10. Mostly because of that last part right there. And a little bit because of the stuff with Kazumi and Murakami. Those two are my favorite. I, I, I like Murakami and Kazumi together the best. Nico, I just don't really care about because she doesn't even have her memories. And she's probably not getting them back. So... I, it, it was a shame, too, because at once I actually did care. Like, when Murakami... Oh, this was, what, like, 20 chapters ago? Maybe more? Probably more, actually. When they were dealing with one of their first um, AAA rank um, magic users. And uh, he actually realized that it was, in fact, Nako. Because he saw that her birthmark or whatever moved because she had grown. Like, naturally, like her height, you know? So, and he, and he remembered that, but because the... the uh, magic user they were dealing with could deal with like memory or time or something like that she rewound time and he ended up forgetting about it you know so I, I, I want and I was really disappointed by that I, I really wanted him to remember and like and uh, tell Nako what he had remembered but now at this point I really don't care anymore I like him with Cosme better but uh, wow I'm, I got really off topic um, yeah <laughs> that's it for the chapter like I said it gets a 7 out of 10 Rate, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.